Hare Krishna. So let's begin with a small prayer. Ma Om Vishnu Pada, Extra Prashta, Muntale, Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine. Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pracharine. Your visitors are soon here. Badi Pasta, Kedisa Darine. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhupada, Shri Advaita, Dara Shibasa, the Gauravakta Munda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nukam Karoti Vacha, Lambangundangayate, Rimitri Patu, Deshri Gurum Dinatarinam, Rama Aradavadam, Sri Chaitanya, Ishwaram, Rivum Katsad. Hare Krishna, welcome back to the last session uh, in this course of Bhagavad Gita, 18 weeks uh, sessions. Let me share my screen. <clears throat> Able to see my screen? Yes, yes Prabhuji. So, 18th chapter is the conclusion where Krishna speaks about the perfection of renunciation. Let's get going. Uh, as you mentioned yesterday, today's session may uh, extend to probably half an hour more because the, uh, I mean, 18th chapter is one of the biggest chapters in Bhagavad Gita. So, there are quite a bit of uh, slides to be covered in today's session and also we will have concluding words uh, to conclude the uh, 18 weeks Bhagavad Gita course. Okay. So let's begin with a recap on the 17th chapter. <clears throat> so in the 17th chapter, uh, Krishna was mainly speaking about the uh, Effects of three modes of material nature. In the 14th chapter itself, Krishna began to speak about the three modes. And over here, Krishna is explaining the uh, impacts of three modes in various aspects of our lifestyle. Beginning from the food that we eat, the charity that we give, and the faith and worship that we instill in and the sacrifices that people perform. So yesterday we saw a detailed explanation on how a person in the mode of goodness, passion and ignorance would be behaving in these different aspects. And finally, in the conclusion, Krishna spoke about the significance of Om Tatsat Om represents the Supreme Lord Vishnu and we also saw the uh, significance why Krishna spoke about that. So basically Krishna wants all the activities to be performed for the satisfaction of himself, Supreme Lord Krishna himself. I was explaining that these three modes, <clears throat> goodness, passion and ignorance, these are binding us to this material world. A person who is in the mode of goodness typically worships demigods, eats sattvic food, performs sacrifices as mentioned in the scriptures as a duty and has control over his speech. He delivers speech only which is pleasing, which is truthful and so on. We saw all those things. Without understanding Bhagavad Gita, one may conclude that a person in the mode of goodness is an ideal person. Isn't it? How many of you thought like that? Someone who is very pleasing, contented, always happy. I was How many of you thought? I was thinking like that before I was attending Bhagavad Gita class. So yes, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it will be kind of an eye-opener 
for all of us. Those who are uh, studying Bhagavad Gita for the first time, I'm sure it would be an eye-opener. Krishna wants us to transcend these three modes. See, if someone is in the mode of goodness always and he leaves his body, what would be his destination in the next life? Develop. He would go back to the heavenly Develop. earth. Heavenly planets. Heavenly planets, right? And Krishna doesn't want us to go to that place because it is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita itself, Abrahma Bhavanar Loka, Hunaravartino Arjuna. So whether you go, whether you remain in this earthly planet or you go to even up to the Brahma Loka. That is not ideal for us because in all these 14 planetary systems, we have to face with the problems of birth and death. One may not have uh, diseases or old age so much in the heavenly planets. That is true. But the problems with Janma and Mrityu cannot be avoided even in the heavenly planets. Right? So, before understanding Bhagavad Gita, um, we all had a wrong conception that when somebody passes away, we immediately write, you know, so-and-so person died on this day and uh, the person has reached the heavenly abode. Swarga Loga Prapti. So, we wrongly thought that Swarga Loka or the heavenly planet is the ultimate abode. But we understand from Bhagavad Gita that Swargaloka also has the problems of birth and death. <coughs> so if you remain in one of these three modes, <coughs> maximum that you can reach is the heavenly abode, the upper planetary systems. Krishna doesn't want us to struggle again in this material world. Because Krishna is... Um, residing in a place which is beyond these three um, types of planetary systems, upper, middle and lower. No? His place is above all this material world and that is called spiritual world or Goloka Vrindavan. If someone has to reach that place, uh, which is what is typically called liberation or mukti, then one has to cross beyond these three modes. So in yesterday's session, we saw different aspects of lifestyle. We ourselves can evaluate where we stand in the current place. And we also saw how someone who has transcended these three modes would adapt his lifestyle. For example, uh, with regards to food, we saw a person in mode of goodness at the max will have vegetarian food. But whereas a person who is practicing devotional service, he would always have prashadam. Prashadam is the sanctified food offered to Krishna which doesn't have any sinful reaction. So when we start eating only prashadam, then we can transcend the three modes. Likewise, <clears throat> performing sacrifices. There may be so many uh, sacrifices mentioned in the Vedas. Uh, things that would only elevate us to higher planetary system. So, when someone is Krishna conscious, he would engage in Sankirtana Yajna, performing the chanting of the holy name, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So, that is the prescription in the age of Kali Yuga. Salautat Hari Kirtana. So simply by performing this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, chanting of Hare Krishna Mantra, one can transcend these three modes. <clears throat> so like that, we went on and saw on these different aspects how one can transcend the three modes. And in the conclusion, <clears throat> Krishna spoke about uh, the consciousness. Why I do what I do? So, activities are done by the influence of three modes. 
So when we can transcend these three modes, then the activity itself is performed for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord. So that is the best form of activity that we all can perform. So this process of Krishna consciousness is to engage all of us by performing activities throughout the day for the satisfaction of Krishna. So we can learn that from authorized um, representatives of Lord Krishna. They are called Gurus. Gurus will be able to explain to us how we can adapt our lifestyle so that uh, we always remain in Krishna consciousness. So that's the brief um, recap from yesterday's session. Any questions? Okay, so let's um, get into the 18th chapter. Just give me a pause. I'll come back. Um, Sorry. Um, yeah. So let's begin with the 18th chapter. So in the 18th chapter, Krishna is going to summarize the Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga in the first section. Then in the second section, he dwells a little bit more into the three modes of material nature. And in the third section, he is speaking about who is an ideal worker. And then in the fourth section, Krishna introduces us to love of Godhead. So what could be the supreme goal of any living entity? Hmm? So that is love of Godhead. So if you can develop unconditional love towards Krishna, that is the perfection of life. So that, how one can develop, so Krishna is going to explain in the fourth section. Finally, the end results of studying Bhagavad Gita. So these are the uh, different sections in 18th chapter. Let's get into the chapter. So summary of <clears throat> Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga. So it begins with Arjuna's doubt and then Krishna gives his final opinion. Krishna says, who is responsible for action? Okay, so what was Arjuna's doubt? Arjuna's doubt was on these two topics. One is sannyasa and another is Tyaga. So from hindsight, it may look similar, these two terminologies. But when we understand from scriptural perspective, they are different. Sannyasa typically means renouncing the activities itself which are materially motivated. Say, for example, say, for example, I am working in a private company. So, if I take sannyasa, then I would relinquish my job because I consider my job to be a material activity. So, this is typically a sannyasa. In Arjuna's case, if you remember, uh, he was in the battlefield of Kurukshetra and he was a Kshatriya. Kshatriya is supposed to fight in the battlefield. He did not want to fight. So Krishna is convincing Arjuna why he has to fight. So that's why he introduced the concept of Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga and eventually Bhakti Yoga. So Krishna's, uh, Arjuna's doubt here is, what is your prescription Krishna? Whether one should be a Sanyasi or a Tyagi? Sanyasi means, in Arjuna's case, he would refuse to fight, he would put down the bow and he would take to renunciation. Is that what Krishna wanted Arjuna to do? And 
that was his question and in the second case tyaga tyaga is where one would perform their activities prescribed according to um <clears throat> their varnashrama so in today's session we krishna will also introduce us to varnashrama dharma so basically there are four varnas brahman kshatriya vaishya sudra brahmachari grahastha vanaprastha and sanyasa so whether one should perform their activities and renounce the results so that is tyaga so arjuna's doubt was what is krishna's prescription here whether one should take sanyasa or tyaga so this is where the chapter begins so lesson for us keep asking till you are clear and convinced if you see arjuna in various instances in bhagavad gita he keeps asking question repeatedly some of the questions are uh, repetitive uh, question with regards to whether one should perform activity or not this comes up in third chapter fourth chapter and now again in the 18th chapter so you can keep asking questions until you are convinced so at the time uh, at once uh, when one is convinced then it is time to follow then no longer ask further questions so this should be the uh, thought process of a practicing devotee <clears throat> so to this question krishna is giving his final opinion so can one of you read the translation hare krishna prabhu yes all these activities should be performed without attachment or any expectation of result they should be performed as a matter of duty o son of prata that's my final opinion thank you mm -hmm. right so basically krishna is saying don't refrain from performing activities you perform your activity but with an element of detachment don't expect the result from the activity rather uh, doubt tail the result of your activity for krishna so that is the final conclusion of Krishna here. So then, uh, why Krishna is asking Arjuna to work with an element of detachment? Krishna is going to give the reason for that. Because when do we get attached to something? When we think that we are the one who is doing that activity, right? Most often, we take credit for all our success. right so we perform uh, quite nicely as a student we score good marks then we take credit when our name and photo gets published in our school saying that so and so person has achieved uh, first rank in plus 2 or 10th then we feel proud we take credit for that but can we really take credit for uh, our activities or the result of our activities yes or no no guruji no no guruji no, no, why, no, not? Prabhu. why not because krishna uh, krishna only because krishna of krishna the induced krishna gives us the ability to do otherwise krishna we won't be able to work right krishna gives us the ability to perform the activity right perform the activity so in this verse krishna is further elaborating that there are five reasons for an action five people who can take credit for an action what are they we will discuss in detail uh, one of you can read the translation hari krishna prabhu ji yes the Hare place krishna. of action the body the performer the various senses the many different kinds of endeavor and ultimately the super soul these are the five factors of action Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. For any action to be performed, place of action, adhisthanam. Adhisthanam means the place of action. Basically, our body. Are we this body? What is no, our identity? We are, we are, we are soul. Our soul. Right. We are a spirit are soul, spirit. having this body. That is the right understanding. Right. So when we say that we are performing the activity, uh, 
it means that V represents the spirit soul. But actually, there are five reasons for that activity. One is the body, Adhishtana. And the next reason is Tata Karta, the performer. And who is the performer here? Krishna. No, Krishna oh, comes Krishna later. Kruti. Krishna comes the later. Soul. Body. The spirit soul. The spirit soul. Right? Karta is the spirit soul. The identity of each individuals. I am doing this activity, which means I represents the spirit soul, right? So the body, the spirit soul, the various senses, we all have different senses, eyes, hands, legs, you know, so many different senses, you know, karma indriya, jnana indriya, so we understand from the scriptures. So can we perform any activity if we don't have our senses? No. Not possible. Let's, we find many people who are born blind. Then obviously they cannot see anything, isn't it? So can we be proud of our capability to see objects? Not really, isn't it? Because who has given this eyes? Ultimately the Supreme Lord. And if you don't have eyes, we cannot see. Likewise, if you don't have this body, we cannot perform any action. Right? So other than the individual or the performer, so, so far we have seen Adhishtanam as well as um, basically the senses. Right? And then Krishna says many different kinds of endeavor. So, um, for example, I get a good score in an examination. Is that something which I achieved overnight? Is it possible? No, over a period of time. Yes. So it requires lots of practice, isn't it? So if somebody scores good marks in 12th examination, which means that he has consistently performed well from um, probably the beginning of 12th standard, if not even before that. Right? So he has taken a lot of uh, pain to study. He was coached by um, multiple people. Uh, and uh, he also practiced by writing many uh, model examinations, so on and so forth. So it requires different kinds of endeavors. And finally, the <coughs> super soul. Right? So if you don't have the sanction of the super soul, then obviously we cannot Perform that action. So, I will give you one more uh, mundane example to understand this a little better. Uh, so, we all have uh, some knowledge about cricket. Right? So, in cricket, <clears throat> the place of action, you can compare that to a pitch at a ground, you know, a playground. So, if you don't have a playground or a pitch, will I be able to score runs? No. No. Right? So, I cannot uh, conduct a cricket match in my house. I need uh, a proper playground. So, that is a place of action. And who is the performer here? Myself. So, if I am a batsman, I go and if I perform, then I can able to score. Right? And what are the different senses uh, which we can think of here? So if I have to score, then I need to have a bat, right? So, and I also need to have a gloves. I need to have a protective equipments. So without that, if I go and uh, uh, try to play, I won't be able to play, right? So these are the different senses and different kinds of endeavor. So Sachin Tendulkar uh, did not become who he was overnight. So he practiced, he put on lots of effort. Right? So, without those efforts, without those practice matches, one cannot shine in the uh, international match. And of course, finally, if you see, without the Supreme Lord's will, can anyone perform nicely on a cricket match? No. Right? <clears throat> uh, people say that uh, you know, when somebody scored nicely, then luck favored him. There is nothing called luck. 
its divine intervention, the Supreme Lord's wish. If Krishna wanted a person to score nicely in a cricket match, then he would allow. Right? So, like that, for any activity, if you see, these are the five different uh, people or persons who are responsible for that action. So, why Krishna is giving that knowledge? In order to make Arjuna understand that don't think that you are the only performer. Only reason for an activity. There are five reasons. So, if we have this understanding, we unknowingly take credit for our action, for all our accomplishments. And with this understanding, we are able to um, logically conclude that only one-fifth of the credit goes to me. The remaining four-fifth credit doesn't belong to me, actually. So, don't become too proud or too depressed for our success or failures. So, this is very, very practical in our lives. Why people become um, jubilant for their accomplishments or they go into mental depression for failures because they think that they are the performers, they are the doers, they are the controllers. If we have this right understanding from Bhagavad Gita, then you won't be dejected or uh, jump up and down in the air for our successes. We give due credit to the Supreme Lord for all our accomplishments. Right? So this is the next important section in this chapter. Then comes the discussion about modes of nature. Okay. So, here Krishna is going to speak about the effect of modes and concluding statement on the three modes. So, he is speaking about um, how the different modes are going to impact our knowledge, our understanding, our action, determination and happiness. So, <clears throat> it is kind of an invisible web, these three modes. I am getting completely entangled by uh, the effects of these three modes. What about happiness in these three modes? Someone who is in the mode of goodness Happiness is compared to uh, poison at the beginning, whereas it ends like nectar. Typically self-realization. And then for a person in the mode of passion, it is nectar at the first and poison at the end. It arises from sense gratification. So I will give you some practical examples. Um, people in the mode of goodness typically would have a lifestyle which begins early in the morning. They wake up in the Brahma Mahurta, 4.30, 5 o'clock, they perform yoga, yogic exercises, and some breathing exercises. And then they would recite some slokas, they would worship the Ishta Devadas, some demigods. So that's how the person in the mode of goodness begins. Is it so easy to practice in the beginning, this kind of a lifestyle, where you sacrifice your sleep? No. No, right? It is quite difficult in the beginning. So that's why Krishna says it appears like poison at the beginning. But what about the end result? If somebody can perform this over a period of time, how would such person feel over a period of time? Good. Good, Prabhuji. Yeah, it would, it would uh, give a lot of satisfaction, isn't it? So, you know, there are many famous yoga gurus. <clears throat> I think uh, BBK Sayangar or someone who lived for, uh, I think, if, if I'm not wrong, 100 plus years. Isn't it? So, if you look at his lifestyle, it would fall into this category. Huh? So, have a healthy food habits, uh, lead a peaceful life, perform some uh, exercises or yogic processes. 
So such people, the beginning would be quite difficult, but as it progresses, the end result would be nectarian. And what about a person in the mode of passion? It would appear nectar in the beginning. Like for example, anyone who wants to gratify their senses, indulge in sense gratification. It would be very happy in the beginning. Isn't it? Any examples that you can think of? Happiness in the mode of passion. <coughs> Sleeping till late. Well, that would fall into the category of ignorance. Okay. Shopping, going for shopping, end up in spending months. Right. That's a very nice example. Right? So you shop around, it would appear very uh, satisfying to us uh, until the time when we get the bill, final bill. Right? You go along with your wife and the wife shops like hell and at the end you, she rips your purse. So it may be uh, nectar at the beginning but poison at the end. Like many examples that we can think, right? Say a new film gets released, now you are uh, wanting to uh, see the first day, first show of that film, you book along um, upfront, you take your entire family, you watch the film. So it may sound to be nectarian in the beginning, but then when you come out of the film, more of, most often you end up spending more and uh, you end up coming back to home with a headache. Right? So you watch uh, an emotional film filled with the drama. So that point of time, it would um, give you happiness. But then over a period of time, what it brings us is only um, trouble. Right? I'm sure all of you can agree to this point as well. So this is typically happiness in the mode of passion. Prabhuji, eating out mm -hmm. also can come in passion? Yes, definitely. Any sense gratification. It would be nectarian in the beginning. You eat nice uh, gobi manchurian and uh, fried rice in hotel. Uh, it would be yummy. Uh, you would have uh, you would have satisfied your taste bud. But then over a period of time, you develop uh, all sort of diseases. Right? So you develop ulcer. You have to consult a doctor, take medicines, all this. So it would be nectarian in the beginning, but definitely not so in the end. Ignorance is he is completely aloof from everything. Uh, all the actions are performed out of illusion, arises from sleep, laziness, and illusion. And there is no happiness at all because he is um, he is always in an inebriated state. So where is the question of happiness? So, in our search for happiness, we should not forget to see whether it is going to be long-lasting, beneficial and conducive. Hmm? Only spiritual life can give us a long-lasting happiness. I'm sure you all would have experienced it. Huh? After a hectic work at office, if you take a break and go to a temple, huh? um, take uh, the weekends off and visit some temples, the way there sums in South India. So I'm sure you all would have felt happiness in doing that. Similarly, when you chant the holy name of Lord, this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, that gives you immense happiness. In the beginning, it would definitely be bitter in order to spend two hours of time chanting 16 rounds of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It may sound difficult, but if you start practicing it, consistently for a long period of time, I am sure you will feel happiness. That happiness cannot be compared with material happiness. I am telling you this. So, for that, one needs to experience it by practically rendering service to Krishna. Right? So, in this section, Krishna is going to conclude it by a statement. So now if you can read the translation for me. Yes, Sabadva Mataji. 
हेनरी पद्मा माता जी यस यस प्रभु जी ट्रांसलेशन देयर इज नो बीइंग एग्जिस्टिंग इधर हियर or among the demigods in the higher planetary systems which is freed from these three modes born of material nature thank you prabhu ji yeah so whether you are a human being or a demigod living in higher planetary system so still you are bound by the three modes we see from the shastric uh, examples indra who is supposed to be the king of heaven he was also influenced by the three modes of nature and he started doubting whether krishna was really the supreme personality which past time in krishna lila was that govardhan govardhan lila right so um, indra he wanted to test whether krishna was really supreme so he flooded vrindavan with um, rain it was devastating rain something which he would release only during pralaya so what happened krishna uh, effortlessly lifted the govardhan mountain govardhan hill in his left hand little finger and he held that mountain for seven continuous days so at the end of seventh day indra's pride was put down and he realized his mistake and he went and asked for forgiveness to krishna so that is one leela where we can understand even indra is influenced by three modes of nature right so there is no point in aiming for heavenly planets so that is the conclusion of krishna now so the next aspect that krishna is going to cover is on the topic of someone who is an ideal worker <clears throat> so we all come from different backgrounds any of you in this call who come from a business background supposing my father okay so shri vidya mata ji is partner right uh, not like that the... not like that prabhu ji my father is a businessman Oh, your father. Okay, I thought your life partner is a business. Okay. No, he is a data scientist. My father is a businessman. Okay, so Sri Vidya Mataji's husband is a data scientist. Uh, father is a businessman, and Brajadevi Mataji, you are you are also yes. a business. Yeah, my father is a businessman. Uh, okay. And uh, but my husband is an IT field. Okay. Um. Anyone who comes from um a political background here someone who's relative is attached to the, the politics okay so none from this group okay um so anyone who is coming from an administrative background to someone who is an ias officer or uh, who decides policies for the government or even someone who is coming from uh, the background of uh, taking care of deities in the temple or uh, worshiping the deities at home things like that so anyone from that background prabhu ji i am worshiping deities at home okay at this garanita deities even i am worshiping deities okay deities at home we take it okay yeah so three of them take care of deities at home so basically the pujari service right so uh, if you see the brahmanas they used to perform this activity and uh, uh, what about uh, okay so politics yeah so basically i covered all the four different classes so krishna is going to speak about introduce us to the four classes of people the brahmana kshatriya vaishya and shudra so these are called varnas so let's see what krishna is going to speak about them so for social order and duties perfection through work and attaining the supreme so how one can perfect through working according to that social order and how one can attain the supreme law so 
it is not that only in India, uh, with the caste system of Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, that we have these four social orders. We can find the system in any part of the world. Uh, even if you look into the America, you would find politicians, you would find businessmen, like the uh, Facebook, Facebook founder, Zuckerberg, or you know, so many businessmen, the Tesla founder, uh, Elon Musk. So business communities are there. And you also have people who frame the policies of the government, someone from the administrative department, right? So the thinkers um, and the scientists, so they all come into the another category. You can term that as a Brahminical category because these are the intelligent set of people. And finally, in any society, you will also find workers. So who do day-to-day um, -day work, be it in the software field or in the field of mining or in the field of agriculture. So we also find workers in any society. Right? Is there any society in the world which doesn't have these four social orders? No, Guruji. No, no Prabhuji. No, right? So any society will have these four social orders. Unfortunately, the Western world, they blame our nation, saying that we are, um, we have this caste system, uh, and uh, which, is, which is evil to the society and things like that. If you look at their own society, they also have this different four uh, social orders. But just that they don't name such social order as Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, or Sudra. Right? So, Krishna is saying that if you want to get satisfaction with your job, Bhagavad Gita is giving a solution. Pick up the occupation which is suitable for our own nature. I may be inclined to gain knowledge or remain on a sattvic platform uh, trying to understand the scripture, right? So, which means I am more uh, favorable towards Brahminical way of living. So, this these four orders in the society, Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, they are not decided based on one's birth. It is not that one can be born as a Brahmin or a Kshatriya. He has to acquire that quality. In this section, Krishna is saying, Chatur Varnyam Maya Srishtam Guna Karma Vibhaga Saha. These four uh, Varnas, Brahman Chatriya Vaishya Sudra, they are based on one's Guna, quality, and Karma activity. So, based on our quality and activity, uh, we are categorized into one of these four systems. Right? So, these days, uh, many of us are doing the activity of a Shudra. What is the activity of a Shudra? Cleaning. Cleaning. Working, Cleaning for, others. Working, working for, for others. Working for others and work for somebody. Working under someone. Yeah, working under somebody. It's not that only cleaning activity is, is the activity of a Shudra. No. If you are working under someone, if you consider someone as a master and you become a servant of that person, then that job is actually a Shudra job. Right? Somebody said, uh, um, I think um, Sri Vidya Mataji's husband is working in a software firm. So, which category does that uh, work belong to? Working for others. Right? So, which means it is a Shudra category. And Prabhu business... teaching, how about teaching, Prabhu? Teaching. Teaching, right? So, uh, so uh, teaching. Although we work in a school and uh, we are working under someone, but we are teaching. Right. So in Kali Yuga, all of us are um, in the category of Shudra. Why? Because teaching supposed to be a Brahminical work. Unfortunately, is not the case. I am not working as a teacher for free. I am dependent on my master 
who would be the uh, correspondent or the management of my school i get paid for my work and i also shift my job if i am not happy with the salary i shift my job to some other school isn't it so these are not qualifications of a brahmana these are qualifications of a shudra right so if you analyze a bit more all the activities are performed on the shudra platform even for that sake a brahmanical person who is actually performing all the ritualistic ceremonies perform marriages perform other various other functions right so can he really be called as a brahmana is paid no no guru he is paid he is paid for it he is paid for no it yeah. right and he also has aspirations so these days the brahmanas you know they come with a package if you want a marriage to be performed with 11 brahmanas then this is the package 1 lakh if you want a mediocre brahmanas then with five brahmanas then it is 50000 and if you want uh, very ordinary brahmanas one or two then we can uh, accomplish this in 20000 so it's like a deal right so you work for money the moment you work under somebody for monetary benefit then you are not considered as a brahmana so that way the shastra clearly says kalau shudra sambhava in kali yuga whether you like it or not all of us have the quality of a shudra so something which we need to understand clearly so this section of bhagavad gita krishna is clarifying that but we can achieve perfection through our work one of you can read the translation hare krishna prabhu ji yes hare krishna it is better to engage in one's own occupation even though one may perform it imperfectly <clears throat> than to accept another's occupation and perform yeah you are breaking but uh, that's fine uh... okay so he krishna is saying don't switch your occupation duty if you have the nature to become a shudra work like a shudra don't artificially uh, jump to the brahmanical platform like for example i am a software engineer i have been working in software company for many years can i ever become a brahmana performing ritualistic uh, ceremonies for uh, um, um, for different families is that possible at all not really right so i may take up to brahmanical profession these days people do that you know, because uh, you get tax free income and uh, you can go to the job whenever you like so there are many concessions given for a brahmana and you are also respected in the society so for that sake if you uh, start performing your brahmanical uh, occupation even though that is not befitting you <clears throat> then that is not appreciated by krishna in specifically in arjuna's case arjuna wanted to beg on the street he wanted to take up to sanyasa krishna is saying no that is not your nature your inbuilt nature is that you are a kshatriya you are supposed to fight in the battlefield you cannot take to brahmanical um uh, brahmanical occupation and go and beg on the street that is not befitting you don't try to choose something which you are not right so this is the uh, uh, concept that krishna is speaking about here so we all are born original and unique so we should not try to become someone else's copy so but in spite of being what we are so whether i am a brahmana or a kshatriya or shudra or vaishya still i can attain the supreme god how is it possible krishna is giving the knowledge uh, can somebody read this
ஹரே கிருஷ்ணா பிரபுஜி ஒன் கேன் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் மீ ஆஸ் ஐ ஆம் ஆஸ் த சுப்ரீம் பர்சனாலிட்டி ஆஃப் காட் ஹெட் ஒன்லி பை டிவோஷனல் சர்வீஸ் அண்ட் வென் ஒன் இஸ் சீன் ஃபுல் கான்சியஸ்னஸ் ஆஃப் மீ பை சச் டிவோஷன் ஹீ கேன் என்டர் இன் டு தி கிங்டம் ஆஃப் காட் ஹரேகிருஷ்ணாஸ்டம் the great alvars uh, that there are 12 alvars who are famous right many of them in fact 99% of them they are not brahmanas they come from different backgrounds some some are from the kshatriya background some of them are shudra background right so but still because they had so much of devotion for lord vishnu they are even now um they are even now praised as some of the topmost devotees of lord right we worship those alvars right one of the alvar he was a uh, he was a thief by profession right but when he came in contact with the supreme lord supreme lord showed his mercy and he became a devotee he became an alvar right so what matters is the devotion we should not be identifying ourselves with our bodily designation so i am a born brahmana i am a born um, chettiyar i am a born nadar these are all bodily designations we should not get enamored with our superficial bodily designations the goal of human form of life is to perform devotional service and to achieve supreme lord's abode right so that one should always keep in mind so the life lesson for us bhakti yoga or devotional service is the key to the place which is eternal peaceful and blissful uh, if you want to reach goloka vrindavan whether you are brahman kshatriya vaishya sudra it doesn't matter if you can perform bhakti you can achieve perfection then in the next section krishna speaks about love of god and <clears throat> so krishna speaks about a ray of hope and surrendering unto krishna right so can one of you read this hey krishna hey krishna in all activities just depend upon me and work always under my protection in such devotional service be fully conscious of courage yes. yes so we all have taken birth in this material world to our parents so we all come from certain background but still if you perform activities any activity depending on krishna then such activity actually gives us protection by the lord himself no? if we can perform such devotional service and fully conscious of the supreme lord then we can achieve perfection in this life right so in the previous section krishna spoke about the different social orders four social orders but now he is giving a ray of hope for anyone from any background so depend on krishna follow the principles of bhagavad gita under the guidance of a bona fide guru spiritual master perform activities remembering krishna and what is the result we get protection we can pass over all the obstacles and lord personally takes us to his uh, supreme abode the goal of the vrindavan so very easy if you are simple if you are complicated it also becomes very complicated so what is the life lesson for us we should be attentive and alert to this hope from the lord he is giving us this calling 
he is waiting so we need to respond somebody understood bhagavad gita what krishna is wanting us to do then he has to engage himself or herself in devotional service so if what happens if you don't follow krishna then you will be lost so we are all you no know, um, submerging in a big ocean samsara sagara uh, and we are trying uh, we are hoping that somebody would help us supreme lord is there uh, trying to lift us but if we don't obey supreme lord's order then we will drown in this samsara sagara again keep taking birth after birth life after life so propat says i am not this dream i am a spiritual fact so i have a different business so this life is not a dream it is a fact we are born as so and so and our business is not to enjoy in this life our business is to serve supreme lord krishna and reach his abode at the end of this life so that is quite clear from bhagavad gita so we will continue what krishna is intending to say yeah this is, so this is a very famous verse sarva dharman parityachya mam ekam sharanam braja aham tvam sarva papebhyo mokshayasyami va shucha um can one of you read the translation beautiful translation hari krishna hari krishna prabhu ji yes sir yeah. matra about all verities of religion and just surrender and to me i shall deliver you from all sinful reactions do not fear thank you right sarva dharman parityajya you give up all other dharma uh, i am brahman i am kshatriya i have a dharma to do this do that and do trikala sandhya vandana uh, perform ritualistic ceremonies give up all that just surrender into krishna krishna says he will deliver me from all sinful reactions uh, we saw three different activities karma vikarma akarma karma is that activity which is performed as per vedic scripture vikarma is that activity which is performed against the vedic scripture both of them are going to bind us into this material world so we need to be performing akarma activity which will please supreme lord krishna surrendering ourselves completely to the supreme lord if we can do that then krishna is promising us he will relieve us of all the sinful activities sinful reactions and finally he says do not fear such an um warranty statement so we all purchase some uh, electronic items we get warranty statements you follow certain uh, rules and regulations and even if the machine uh, becomes faulty then no problem they will replace the machine similarly krishna is giving us a warranty statement don't worry you keep performing activity for my pleasure there will be no sins from that activity so surrender unto krishna will give us transcendental peace and it will take us to the supreme and eternal abode free from all sinful reactions so the lesson for us devotional service or activity for pleasing krishna very minimal effort and it the result is maximum for example chanting of the holy name it only requires you to um, glorify the lord with your mouth and hear chanting of hari krishna maha mantra should be heard loud and clear you spend half an hour one hour time daily consistently which is a minimal effort but the result of that activity is something which you cannot imagine that half an hour or one hour time you will not incur any reaction at all whether it is positive or negative reaction that krishna is giving us the guarantee
<clears throat> and then in the last section, Krishna is going to speak about the end result of someone who has understood and started practicing Bhagavad Gita. Krishna speaks about what are the qualities of a person who can receive this knowledge. And then further Krishna says, uh, what happens to those who distribute this knowledge? One who studies this Bhagavad Gita. One who listens with faith. And finally, the supreme auspiciousness. Okay. So who can receive this knowledge? All, all of you in this call, you are fit to receive this knowledge. Because all of you are devoted non-envious, you are trying to become a friend of Krishna and also practice some level of self-control. Right? So, you have been hearing to these Bhagavad Gita classes for 18 continuous uh, sessions, which is not an ordinary thing. You know, in this material world, spending your Saturdays and Sundays to hear about Lord Krishna, not many people are willing to do that. Krishna himself says, Bahunam Janmana Mante, Yanavan Mam Prapatyate, Vasudeva Sarvamiti Sam Mahatma Sudurlabhata, Manushyanam Sahasreshu, Kaschid Yadad Siddhaye. Out of thousands of people, only one person would be willing to turn towards Krishna. All 23 devotees who are assembled here, you all are very special in front of Krishna. You are really fit to receive this knowledge. And you have received this knowledge, you start practicing it in your own life and when you start distributing this knowledge to others, what is the benefit of such people? Can someone read this translation? For one who explains the supreme secret to the devotees, Few devotional service is guaranteed. And at the end, he will come back to me. Thank you. So that is the secret, actually. Why the devotees are spending time to share this knowledge to others, we also have certain personal benefit, which Krishna is giving here. When you can distribute this knowledge to others, then our ticket going back to Krishna is guaranteed. Right? So you all can also become a recipient of this mercy. If you can distribute Bhagavad Gita to your known dear ones, um, your friends and relatives, then you become very special, very dear to Krishna. Right? And all the more, if you can explain Bhagavad Gita to others, whatever you learnt from these sessions, you know, 18 sessions, then there is nothing like that. So you become very, very dear to Supreme Lord Krishna. Now the lesson for us is, that is the real secret. Inspire others to read Bhagavad Gita. By doing so, you become dearer to the Supreme Lord Krishna. In Srimad Bhagavatam as well, <clears throat> the gopis of Vrindavan, they actually mention this point in the famous Gopi Gita, which comes in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Tavakata Pritam Tapta Jeevanam So in that verse, Shna, uh, the Gopis of Vrindavan are saying, Bhuvi Grinantiye Bhurida Janaha uh, In this world, when someone can glorify Supreme Lord Krishna, to the people in this earthly planet, then such persons are very dear to Krishna. Burida Janaha. Such persons are very rare and they are very, very dear to Supreme Lord Krishna. This is not a statement coming from me. It is a statement coming from the dear most devotees of Lord Krishna. From the Srimad Bhagavatam. So, there are many such uh, um, instances or explanations from the Shastras, which clearly says that we need to propagate this message of Supreme Lord Krishna. 
right so why there were so many acharyas in this uh, um, bharata bhumi they all came and distributed the message of lord krishna to others right so we are all speaking about lord krishna because of those acharyas how much dearer would the lord consider such acharyas shila prabhupad madhvacharya ramanujacharya hmm? all these great devotees of the lord they became so dearer and so so uh, special in the eyes of the lord simply because they distributed the message hmm? there is a famous devotee in chaitanya mahaprabhu sampradaya uh, his name was uh, uh, vasudeva datta you know what he said he said he told to chaitanya mahaprabhu that um if i can take up the um sinful reactions of people so that they take up to krishna consciousness they become devotees then i don't mind going to hell that is the mood of an acharya they don't mind suffering even ramanuja acharya also uh, famously said you no know, he went uh, on top of the gopuram in tirukoshti and then he said that i will distribute this holy name the name of lord narayana to others i don't mind going to hell uh, and suffer if all these people will get benefited right so that is the selfless and compassionate mood of a vaishnava the devotee of lord krishna they propagate the message of god to each and every one without any consideration they don't consider your background they don't consider your uh, nationality they don't consider your caste they don't consider your even your religion uh, we find uh, in krishna consciousness many christians coming from different parts of the world they also take up to krishna consciousness they serve the lord they become very nice devotees of the lord right how is it possible because of the great devotees that's why the devotees are very very dear to krishna so if you want to become very dear to krishna then the shortcut is you just give out the message of bhagavad gita to others right then subsequently krishna is going to speak about the benefit of studying bhagavad gita what is the benefit of someone who studies bhagavad gita that person worships krishna by intelligence we don't worship krishna out of sentiment you know these days we find many people they worship uh, uh, many devatas out of sentiment you know now if i don't go and worship uh, vinayaga before my examination then i will not get good score what is that kind of worship that is worship in the mode of sentiment right so krishna doesn't want us to worship him out of sentiment he wants us to gain proper knowledge with proper spiritual intelligence krishna wants us to worship <clears throat> and what happens to someone who listens lord's message with faith they get free from all sinful reactions and attains the auspicious planets that is the effect of someone who listens to bhagavad gita's instructions with faith and this is an a profound statement one of you can read this translation Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Wherever there is Krishna, the master of all mysteries, and wherever there is Arjuna, the supreme archer, there will also certainly be opulence, victory, extraordinary power, and morality. That is my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yatra Yog, thank you. Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna, Yatra Parthu, Danut Daraha, Yatra Shri, Vida Yog, Vultir, Dhruvani, Tir, Matir Mama, wherever there is krishna the master of mystics and wherever there is arjuna which means when we have the lord's presence now just a minute my battery is running out i will switch on the power
Yeah. So if we can have the Lord present amidst us, and if we can be amidst Arjuna, who represents the devotees. So which means if we are uh, associating with Lord Krishna or his devotees, the Vaishnavas, then such a person will have all opulence, all victory, extraordinary power and morality. That is a profound statement coming from Krishna. We all can always associate with Krishna. How? By chanting his holy name. It is mentioned in the scriptures that there is no difference between Krishna and his holy name. You know? Krishna is non different from his holy name. How did Krishna appear when Draupadi called? Uh, what did Draupadi call to bring Krishna in that place? In the place of gambling? Robin. Yeah, so she called out Krishna's name. Right? Krishna's Nama. Hmm? Uh, there is no difference between Krishna and his name. So you all can on a daily basis associate with Krishna if you can sincerely chant this holy name. And Krishna is not different from his form. You go to a temple or you worship the Lord in your home. You see the darshan of the Lord. There is no difference between Krishna and his form. Krishna's form is completely spiritual. So by worshipping him at home, you are actually associating with Krishna. By reading Bhagavad Gita, Krishna and his message. Bhagavad Gita means what? The song spoken by Supreme Lord Krishna. If you are studying Bhagavad Gita at home, you are actually associating with Krishna. Right? So if you can constantly do associate with Krishna in any of these means and also associate with devotees of Lord Krishna. You know the devotees of Lord Krishna, Vaishnavas, they are everywhere. Those who are speaking about Lord Krishna, they are devotees. If you can associate with such people, then the benefit is you know, um, extraordinary. You get all opulence, you will be victorious in all your endeavors, you will get extraordinary power, and you will also become moral. That is the statement from Krishna. So all we need to do is to be in the company of Krishna and his devotee through their sacred conversation. That is what we all are trying to do for the past 18 sessions. So with that, we will come to an end of uh, the 18th uh, chapter. So I would request devotees to hold back for some more time. I am going to uh, conclude these sessions. And also I will take some questions and I will speak about uh, the upcoming sessions as well. Any question from the 18th chapter? <clears throat> Or any questions from the overall sessions, 1 to 18 chapters, anything that you may have can ask. Okay, so I consider that there are no questions. Fine, so uh, I would like to take some feedback from some of you. Um, you are open to speak about these uh, sessions. Um, how did you find these sessions? Was it useful? Um, anything that you can give as feedback to me so that I can improve upon, I would be very happy to hear. Yeah, Hare Krishna Prabhu, uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, I wish to say something. So, so very profound knowledge, deep knowledge that you made it so simple for us to understand. Like it was so simple. It made it simple. It's not simple. You made it so simple, it was really very, very beneficial. And we were able to understand so many things. So these are all um, very confidential knowledge that cannot be imparted 
and to be learned so easily. But you made it so simple. And your slides are excellent. That's it I want to say. The nutshell of it, the entire, uh, every chapter that you gave, the slides that you have made, is that makes it um, easy. And so your, the slides and your presentation, excellent, Prabhu. So happy that I've been a part of this uh, session. Thank you so much. And we need your association uh, regularly, Prabhu. So, so we need to associate with you. So try to have some more sessions. Definitely. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Thank you, Madhya. So one thing I want to comment here, um, this knowledge that I am giving here, uh, this is not from my own effort. Uh, whatever I learned from Srila Prabhupada's books and from the mercy and the uh, the blessings of my spiritual master, His Holiness Jayapadaka Swami. I am just sharing it with you all. So I don't take any credit from this. And also, as far as the slides are concerned, um, this is not something which I personally prepared. There is, there is a team of devotees who are working on these slides. So it's a team effort, actually. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, yes. Uh, Namaskaram Prabhuji. Uh, I don't know. I don't find any words in expressing our gratitude. Uh, you have been so passionate and uh, very, very composed in explaining to us. And what we have not learned earlier, we could uh, find an opportunity to learn from you. Uh, it's a really wonderful, the example which you have cited. Uh, in fact, honestly speaking, we have to go through from first presentation to till now, once again. Uh, something got uh, evaporated also, it is quite possible. So right. we need to revisit all the slides once again. Uh, we don't mind if you re even um, repeat Bhagavad Gita once again. Um, <laughs> it will be we'll be too glad because any number of times you can hear it. There is no restriction for hearing Bhagavad Gita. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, so is what to say, it is wonderful opportunity and your modesty and simplicity really touch the all of our hearts and thank you very much and I hope you will also take us through um, Srimad Bhagavatam if your time permits. Uh, we are eagerly looking forward. Uh, if you can also give some time but this three to four little, uh, I, I should not say but it's a little sleepy time. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can reschedule it somewhere uh, right. in the morning hours or evening hours, it will benefit all of us. Uh, Thank you very much for this opportunity. Definitely, Prabhu. So what I am planning to do going forward is, um, so I want to take this Bhagavad Gita to the next level um, because, so I don't want to run through the same uh, chapters of Bhagavad Gita as I did now. Um, that you can anyhow um, listen again on the YouTube links. What we will do is, we will try to focus more on the practical aspects of Bhagavad Gita. See, there are three different knowledge that we can get from the scriptures. They are called Sambandha, Abhideya and Prayojana. Sambandha means knowledge about the relationship with Krishna. I am sure you all would have got a glimpse of that. The knowledge about who Krishna is. What is our relationship with him? So on and so forth. Right? So the basic thing that we understood is we are not this body, we are the spirit soul. And we need to be serving Supreme Lord Krishna. So that is the Sambandha knowledge. The next aspect is Abhideya. Abhideya means how I can connect with Krishna. The connection point is devotional service. Which we understood from the uh, chapters 7 and 12 of Bhagavad Gita. Bhakti amam abhijanati yavan yaschaspi tatvataha. Only by bhakti we can understand Krishna. So how one needs to perform bhakti? What are the different processes to be followed? Uh, so those are things which we may not be able to cover in the 18 weeks. So I would like to take this further to elaborate sessions where it will be more of a discussion based session. It's not that I would be speaking alone. In Bhagavad Gita sessions, I was speaking all along. 
and finally i was taking some questions but in those sessions i would want to make it as as much interactive as possible trying to touch upon practical aspects of life so i would post message about those sessions in the group we would be having uh, a week on um, one session per week probably for a little bit more time uh, one and a half to two hours and at a convenient time not at 3 o'clock definitely okay uh, uh, guruji is the bhagavad uh, shrimad bhagavadam is on the card everything is covered in, as part of that session that session okay. includes knowledge from bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavadam we may not go through individual verses of shrimad bhagavatam but um indirectly or directly many of the verses key verses from bhagavatam and bhagavad gita will be included in that in those so this sabu sorry for the interruption yeah. uh, it can be if it is possible uh, night 8 to 9 would be feasible so yeah we can listen to some session like the 8 to 9 communion prob yeah i am going I don't know to about others but uh, But yeah. will it be the weekend, Prabhu Ji? Weekend yes, or it will be, be on a weekend, Madhuri. Yes. So weekend any time is okay. Yeah, because weekdays we have the classes also. Eight to nine. Nine to eight. Uh, one minute, one minute, Madhuri. One minute, Madhuri. Let me finish. Uh, Prabhu Ji, it will be a wonderful thing <clears throat> if you can explain to us someone they are be there, Prabhu Ji. Na. In fact, I was waiting for someone to explain this in detail. <clears throat> That's a very good idea, Prabhu Ji. Yeah. So that will be covered. that will be covered as part of those sessions yeah that's nice yeah. and all you know, the slides and presentation was really excellent dr uh, prabhu ji it makes easy for us to even preach to explain to somebody somebody else they are so right. nicely you know done it's awesome thank you prabhu ji yeah so thank you and i will post uh, about the upcoming sessions in the group uh, i'll also have a poll uh, on different timings so you can vote and in those sessions we may not be able to accommodate all 22 i may divide them into batch of probably 10 if there are more people enrolled i would restrict each batch to 10 people yeah, so that Prabhuji, we can have personal white interactions white morning, mornings prabhu ji because mornings we have a we have a seva and all that no deity worship so much to do get up so early so you can do any time after 4 o'clock it's okay yeah i will give options in the yeah. Yes, Prabhuji. Anybody else would like to share their views about these sessions? Any any comments or room for improvement? I'm happy to take. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. All your classes are excellent, and you are a very simple person to approach. And whatever uh, comes in my mind, very easily I am expressing. If it is wrong, it is allowed in your sessions. So I am happy. Uh, continue like this, and it's a, it's a happy news that you have told that you will be taking some interactive classes. Yes. That will be very helpful to us, Prabhu Ji. Hare sure. Krishna. Waiting for sure. that. Sure. I have one small suggestion, Prabhu Ji. Mm-hmm. Only when next when next time, just uh, try to focus a little on the slokas which we should learn by heart. You know, there are mm-hmm. certain slokas like Sarva Dharma Parityanja. Uh, and you know man man am man bhakto all those things so that we can learn them especially for the new people prabhu ji mm. just a suggestion right sure i'll take that suggestion yeah thank you prabhu ji you anybody else hey krishna prabhu ji jandal pranam hari krishna prabhu ji all the classes are very nice prabhu ji I, I am hearing this uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita for the second time. For the first time, I uh, heard the Bhagavad Gita in the temple, Hyderabad temple classes. They took about four, five, four years uh, foundation and level one, one, two, three. So four years I have finished Bhagavad Gita. But still, while I am mean, hearing from you, as if I am feeling I am hearing something new, and uh, the way you are explaining, the way you are telling is uh, excellent, Prabhu. Uh, you are making quite short and easy to understand. i am very happy uh, i am very lucky to hear from you prabhu ji my one uh, request is uh, i will continue what you are going to tell you further also mm-hmm. uh, I, i may be needing your help but as you said uh, teaching bhagavad gita to others 
uh, is, is a very good thing. And uh, even my teachers in my temple also, they also suggest me to do it, but I'm not that capable. Uh, so uh, if you can guide me, I can uh, I can do uh, after the inside classes are over. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I want a long time guidance from you, Prabhu. Right. Uh, so uh, definitely, uh, Prabhu. Um, actually, there is nothing like someone who is capable of speaking about Krishna or anything of that sort. It's not that somebody is profound in English or profound in scriptural knowledge that he can speak about Krishna. No, that is not the case. In fact, uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam, it is mentioned in uh, various places. Specifically, even Narada Muni explains to Vyasadev, he clearly yes. says, you may have a lot of imperfections when you are glorifying Lord Krishna. But still, that is of topmost importance and benefit. Yes. Yes. Rather, all the mundane literatures yes. may be composed with uh, a good amount of grammar and very eloquently presented. But it is of no use because it is not talking about Krishna. Yes. Yes. So, you just speak from your heart, Prabhu. Yes. Krishna yes. will give all the empowerment and Guru will give all the empowerment. Yes. yes. That's okay. it. But, but still, I need your guidance. Professor. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Help Thank you. you. Thank you. Prabhuji, this is the fourth or the fifth time I have heard this Bhagavad Gita from different, different, you know, sources, from mm -hmm. different teachers. Okay. Every time I hear, I get a different understanding. Right. You know, there are, yes, because everyone can't stress on each and everything. Now, to, now during this session also, I've learned a lot. And I keep on writing. Apart from what you have seen, put in the slides and all that. Still, I'm writing in the book, you know, notes, mm -hmm. you know, which are, which, 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 uh, which I want to understand better. Right. That goes to show that you are very sincere. Zan Prabhu, I'm going to read the whole thing again from the beginning so that I'll be able to preach, you know, in a proper way to the others. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, that's one very thing inspiring. I want to do. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you. Uh, Prabhu, year before last, from Coimbatore, uh, I attended the session. Mm -hmm. It went on for one year. Oh, okay. Every day, one sloka or two slokas like that. Right. Uh, so right. it went on for one year. Mm -hmm. So, so as uh, we need to attend more sessions like this, wherein we'll get some proper understanding. If at all we right. want to say something to others, right? We Actually, should have perfect understanding to. Yeah. If you are willing, yeah. if you are uh, interested in, um. Hearing about individual slokas of Bhagavad Gita, my wife uh, is also handling a class on a daily basis from Monday to Friday. Uh, every day between 4 o'clock to 4.45, 45 minutes. It will be in Tamil. Um, those who can understand Tamil can join the session. Um, they will, she will go verse by verse. And... If you are interested, you can contact me. I can share you the link to that session. Every Hare Krishna, Prabhu ji. I will join the class. Sure, sure. I, uh, I am in Chennai only. I will join the class. Sure, sure. I will pass on the class. Google Meet link. I think they are in which chapter? What is this chapter? Chapter 6. Uh, but anyhow, you can catch up. You will be able to catch up. You now have the basics of Bhagavad Gita. You will yeah. be able to catch up. The key aspect of uh, devotional service is yet to come between chapters 9 to, sorry, from chapter 7 to 12. So we can start attending that session. Okay, so anything else? From chapter 7 to 12 is a cream of Bhagavad Gita, no? Yes, yes. Sir, I am from so the thing is that we need to have the association of devotees. So please make us uh, be a part of anything that you do, sure. Prabhu. Definitely. So Definitely. that's very important. Thank you. Sir, yes, I am sir. from Coimbatore. I also want that uh, individual slokas link. You please send me. Sure, sure, sure. I will send in our group itself. Okay. Anybody interested okay. can join. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Monday to Friday. Tomorrow we may uh, not have uh, that class. Okay, one uh -huh. more information I wanted to give. Tomorrow is Balram Jayanti. Appearance okay. of Lord Balaram. We all know about Krishna Jayanti, but Lord yeah. Balaram appeared um, before Krishna, right? So very, very yeah. auspicious. 
you all okay. can celebrate by fasting for half a day if possible okay. and offer nice food stuff for lord balram balram mm. likes jackfruit so you can okay. prepare <laughs> any is, dish from jackfruit but this is not season for jackfruit sorry <laughs> Yeah. This is not season for jack. Yeah, but in Chennai we do get jack fruit. <laughs> what are the things Babuji likes, Balra? He likes jack fruit. He also likes something called varuni. It's a special it? drink which is made out of honey and various other ingredients. Uh, so he likes in that. He likes vegetables. Uh, hmm? vegetables. He likes uh, something made out of. Uh, um, the uh, unripened jackfruit right so you can make biryani or something some dishes out of that but if you jackfruit so is not available of... <laughs> you can you can find it madhavi it's a challenge to us if you want yeah, to please yeah. lord balram you can find it jackfruit uh, <coughs> raw jackfruit raw jackfruit yes raw jackfruit yeah. or any any dish that you can make with love and devotion balram yes. yeah Yeah, sure. Uh, Subramanya, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure where you are from, but I'll definitely keep posted on the sessions. Okay, so you can continue the Bhagavad Gita sloka by sloka sessions, those who are interested. But these individual sessions, interactive sessions are going to be very useful. I request all of you to please enroll to that. Okay, so any concluding final remarks from anyone? Okay, thank you, Prabhuji. It was a wonderful class, and we enjoyed, especially being a Saturday. We were more relaxed. Right. We had enough time, and thank you for teaching us all this. Really appreciate. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Dandar yeah. Pranam, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Happy Balram Jayanti to you all. Happy Balram Jayanti to everyone. Happy Balram Jayanti. Sorry, Kamala Madhadi, you have something to say? Yeah, so after listening to your session, some revelation is taking place. So slowly yes. I'm able to identify whatever mistakes I have. I'm right. trying to check myself, rectify. So, so there's a eye-opener for me, actually. So thank you so much, Robo. Definitely. Thank you so much. Yeah. Krishna is just using me as an instrument. So I'm happy to be part so of this nice. plan. Lucky that... Uh, I, I was able to be a part of it. I didn't miss the class, miss this association. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna, all devotees. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you and Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Well. <clears throat>